Yes, uh, he's one of the country's most popular stand-up comedians. It's the brilliant Mr Kevin Bridges. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. How are you, sir? Kevin, you're looking great. You've lost a lot of weight. Thank you. John, as of you, yes, thank we've you. lost another guy between us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least. How much weight have you lost? Uh, 17 stone. <laughs> no, Don't, just, you should have acted like that was a joke. That was clearly a joke. <laughs> so I've, I've lost stone. two stone. I've lost two, two stone. I've lost two. Well, it's hard to keep track of when you started. Yes. Like, yes. eating healthy or exercising or whatever it is that you've done. W were you not prompted by, oh, I'm, I'm too heavy right now, I shouldn't be this weight, and, and make a mental note of that weight when you started on your health kit? You didn't well, I was always fat right through school. I was the first in my class to get tits and stuff for that. Yeah. All the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just... <laughs> it's hard. And then the girls in your class start coming to you a few years later looking for advice on bras. <laughs> and... <laughs> I was fat. I was 18 stone when I was 18. Wow. That's wow. big. That's impressive. But it's easy to remember. That's the achievement, <laughs> getting to that size rather than getting it back off. Uh, were all your family big or was it just you? Uh, that's a difficult question to answer on national yeah. telly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are all your family fat? Who was the fattest uh, one in your family? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, portly. We're a portly family. You're well covered. Yeah. But but it's, get, it's colder in Scotland. I've I've it makes sense. Insula yeah. well, I've got a very well insulated family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 18 stone at 18, and then I'm 29. Wow. And I'm 14 stone. That's incredible. So four, four stone. stone. But, but you, in 11 years. You stayed which big. Which is a difficult diet to <laughs> advertise. So it's been gradual. They're not going to see that on the front cover of a women's magazine. <laughs> How to lose four stone in 11 years. <laughs> But it's an achievement. You need to play the long game because you cut out, you cut out carbohydrates. Is I, that right? I've largely, I largely, I exist That's... essentially on meat and fluids. Right, and that cannot be healthy. Is it? Well, you look at me. I look amazing. <laughs> Once again, why would you laugh at that? <laughs> you look amazing on the outside, but <laughs> eating too much. I bet he's got hemorrhoids. And eating too much meat, and it can't be good for you. No, because I went to a personal trainer guy, and he's telling me, he's asking what I have for breakfast. I'm saying I had toast, mate. And he's going, oh, that's starchy carbohydrates you need to eat. He's telling me to eat a steak and eggs. And... How, how the fuck can that be healthier that's than a bit of toast? Because your body can burn that. Yeah, that's giving your body fuel. When you give your body toast, it's, you're giving your body... Essentially, it's like cardboard that's been heated up, OK? With a bit of sugar mixed in. I'm sad that they've got to you, Jonathan. You've been radicalised. <laughs> <laughs> it's carbohydrates. It's... I, I, I tried it for a couple of weeks and I thought I was going insane. So you couldn't survive without them? You no, wanted the I was fantasising about them. What did you miss the most? Anything. I was thinking a combination of boiled rice inside a baked potato or a... <laughs> a spaghetti toasty. I was... I was so hungry. I was going to organise a benefit gig for myself. I was that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'd done was I took a year off booze, right? One year. I just get fed up with the hangovers. And then in that year, because you're so bored, because booze plays a massive part yeah. of your life. That is, I came back, don't worry. It was, I, I came back. <laughs> so a whole I year with no booze, and that, that was when you were eating I the was, bread? I was eating moderately healthy, mm. and then because you've got your weekends booze-free, that's when you start going to the gym. I've took up jogging. Yeah, wow. I'm one of their guys now. And how is that? Because that, when it does feel a bit like you've, you've kind of, you know, joined the other side there. This is not it the does. Kevin Bridges I knew no. years ago. It's sad. I've become... How did your old friends react to this new you? Well, I live in an area now where it's acceptable to go jogging. Yeah. Whereas, <laughs> where I grew up, you just look as if you're getting chased. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've even got the watch when you start like, pausing, jogging <laughs> on the spotted traffic lights. So it's four kilometres, guys, and that stuff. So, I actually done an 8, 8K last night. Wow. The fact Which, that you even just said, I've done an 8K, that's a very I, different you. I, I even gave it a... Is that a thing, an 8K? Yeah. I ran 8K rather than done an 8K. No, you said... We heard you. We yeah. have evidence. You said, I did an 8K last night. It's, it's only... It's you close become to, one of those pricks. It's close to, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Self, can, what can I say? Uh, but it's good. I'm joking, but it's a great thing to see because you've got to look after yourself. You're a young man, and the work you do now, that will serve you in good stead. And you're, uh, of you course, know. it's like a savings account, isn't it? You put yeah. a few stone away, <laughs> you cash it in later on in life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that 55-year-old man scared to eat a sandwich. No, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I do that
Uh, so now you're just about to turn 30. Well, uh, I'm I turn 30 this year, Jonathan, yes. So I met you when you were younger, and I was amazed at how successful you were at such a young age. So when did you start in comedy, and when did you know that you could do it? I mean, were you, were you encouraged at home? Did your parents encourage you? Did your family no. think, OK, this guy could be a professional, even when younger? No, I was always in trouble at school, and that culminated in me being asked to leave school. So I got chucked out of school, I was at a loose end. My parents were obviously disappointed because I was quite academic. I could have went to uni. I felt as if I owed it to my parents to try and turn it into something. But the only thing I was, I was 18 stone, I was fat, I was rubbish at sports. I thought the only thing I've ever been complimented on is being funny. And that's got me into trouble. Why not try and turn it into something positive? That's so a brilliant, what a great, it's almost like yes. an inspirational story right here. It is. Okay. Yes. And so, so when you... <laughs> There's about much fetal filling up. Yeah, it's and nice. It's it's nice. Break, yeah. it's nice. We'll put no. some music on it. We'll get some emotion going. <laughs> so, uh, but, but did did you did you hit the mark running? Were you, when you tried out material initially, was it good? Well, this was when I was 17. You're young, fearless, yeah. rocked up at a comedy club. It went well. My old man came. He loved it. Wow. And so your old man, so gigs. your parents were supporting you in that, and that, and that must be lovely for them then to see you actually try that and then go on and become such a success with it. What a lovely thing. Exactly. Yeah, That's, yeah. They used to come to a lot of my gigs because a lot of the clubs would say because I was under 18, I would need to be accompanied with a parent or a guardian, which is <laughs> pretty uncool. Yeah. So yeah. my dad came to the first three gigs, and then he would say, oh, your mum would love to come and see you do stand-up. So the fourth gig, I'm bringing my mum and my dad. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then I get booked in this place called the Bridge of Allen, which, according to my mum and dad, was quite touristy, quite a cool place to go. So they're saying, why don't we say it to your uncle George and your auntie Maureen? <laughs> So I'm driving through in this car with my uncle, my auntie, my mum and my dad showing up at the gig. There's only about six other people there, so the majority of the crowd are my family. <laughs> and because I was so young, my material was quite smutty. I had a routine about waking up with a hard on in the morning when the house phone was ringing and I'm getting shouted into answer the phone and I've got this erection and I had to, like... I said to the audience, I would... Oh, it was funny when I was 17, it's yeah, not yeah. like the greatest bit of stand-up. <laughs> I used to say, yeah, you had to tuck in your boner yeah. and then walk with a duck arse. The routine was called the tuck it and duck it routine. <laughs> so I'd have to walk across the stage like that. Yeah. And it's quite tragic when you look up and just see your mum and your auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so the car home was like, oh, I went well, Kevin, before it was funny. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> A future there. So once I turned 18, I was free and yeah. I could start coming to London. Yeah, and you could do what you wanted. Yep. Okay. And they still live in Scotland, of course. Yes. And I know, I don't know, I don't know whether we should get into politics. I'm not trying to get into politics here particularly, but I know you were keen for Scotland to get independence, weren't you? Well, I voted for it. Yeah, yeah, because... yeah. So, so uh, the fact that it didn't. Is that a problem, Jonathan? No. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for it, but not the else. Did. Just okay. me. Well, no, quite a few people did. I oh, was well, 45%. I, yeah, which I think was very close. It was a very close result. But it was yes. interesting the way it was reported, certainly down here, was, oh, my God, it was so clearly they were defeated. You think, no, 45 to 55, that's not a huge margin. That's, yeah. you know, pretty close. So you're suggesting a, a no. rematch? Well... <laughs> I'm 55 beats 45. But I... Uh... <laughs> I wonder whether are you keen that you get another chance soon to, to strike up for independence? Nah, do you think just, it was something to do, wasn't it? Just... <laughs> <laughs> we did become the first country in history to vote against its own independence. <laughs> Is that true? Is that wow? Uh, that's quite, it's quite tough to explain. That's quite something. Yeah. I actually had that in New York, an American guy. This is a true story. He's gone. Hey, hey man, are you from Scotland? Uh, he heard my accent, and I said yes. I was going to say I, but I, <laughs> I translated. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and he's going, what, what, what the fuck happened there, man? Who would have fought Scotland? What about freedom? Yeah. And he's going, what, what about William Wallace and all that shit? <laughs> he's going, you guys said no. You know, it was before Asda were going to put their prices up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do Americans... Uh, uh, when I'm over there, Americans, they, they tend to like English people. They love Irish people, it strikes me. How are they with Scottish people? <laughs> I had a guy tell me he was, he was one quarter Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me what clan his family were from. <laughs> I think they still think Scotland's a bit tribal and stuck back in yeah. the brave heart yeah, yeah. days. And he's gone, ah, my family's the Abernethy clan. <laughs> and I'm going, all right, mate. And he's going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling me their motto was Salus, Salus per Christum, which means salvation through Christ. This is in Gatwick Airport. Talking <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Ned Flanders here. <laughs> <laughs> I love, there's a lot of warmth towards <laughs> Scottish people I find when I go. Yeah. They don't understand us, but they just sort of smile politely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the accent's the cutest. Uh, <laughs> OK, 
OK, uh, so here and now, it's Burns Night any day now. Is it next week, Burns Night? I don't know. I think it's Monday night. You don't celebrate? I, no, I never... I assume... I, I, I bank with a Scottish bank, yep. and they always invite me to Burns Night, and they make a big deal when I don't go, as if I'm letting them down. And I used to go, because I used to feel like, well, it's obviously a big thing for you guys, so I better come. You and guys. now I know that people don't care. I don't think I represent the whole nation. I don't personally celebrate But you're the, But you're, you are Scottish. Yes. And you are here. Yes. So I'm asking you about this shit. Yes. All right. <laughs> and I'm telling you... You don't care? Me... Well, I don't... No, I don't care. You're asking me if I'm celebrating Burns Night. I don't... How do you... You're supposed to address the haggis. You're supposed to talk to the haggis before yes, you eat it? you're supposed to talk to a dead animal. <laughs> and then you have some whiskey? And then you have some whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a nice excuse for a party, And then I you guess. put on your kilt, all the stereotypes, and then you deep-fry some heroin, and then... I didn't... <laughs> yes. I didn't start with that. I'm no. just commenting on a big night. But do you own a kilt? Uh, I don't own a kilt, no. I had to wear one once for a wedding, and um, I was only about 15 or 16, and that's the last time I've ever... Did you enjoy wearing the no, kilt? No, because it's really itchy. Uh, and so you don't still have that kilt? You no, hired the kilt? I uh, hired the kilt. Wow. Well, that's probably why it was itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, Jonathan, yes. <laughs> and you get a knife as well. You it's say, called oh, a, you... a ski and do. A ski and do. And yes. you put that in your sock? Yes. What do they call a sock? A sock. OK. <laughs> Give me a quid or you're getting stabbed. Just you.